Hello again my friends, um, welcome to my channel where we discuss matters of um, a biblical nature or matters that has to do with um, why we are here, how did we get here and things in a spiritual, of a spiritual nature. Now I, having posted about three or four four videos about um, God, creation, the Bible, atheism, and all of that. I mean, I have gotten been getting a lot of um, ongoing. Some people are asking questions. Others are making comments. Some are sending me videos to watch, which I do take the time to watch. And um, uh, I am going to use some of my time in these videos um, to attempt to attempt to answer some of the questions that I think is reasonable because as I said before um, I won't tell you that I agree with everything in the Bible I won't tell you that I understand everything about God and the Bible I won't tell you that there are not apparent contradictions um, in the Bible, but um, my I, I don't think um, nobody, whether Christians or atheists, can truly say they have the um, the answer is one hundred percent locked. I believe we all are searching for answers to um, real questions that 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 we need to have answered, with so we can make an intelligent decision. In whether to become an atheist or whether to become a Christian or well I, I don't know anything about the other religions I, I was um, um, brought up as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian I go to church on the Sabbath Saturday because I believe in creation I, and so I honor creation and the Creator by going on the day that he specified which is on Saturday so that makes me a Bible person. I try not to get too much into quoting scripture because a lot of people are offended when you try to use the scripture to prove a point. And so I try to not to use um, the scripture as much as possible. So most of the answers that I'm giving you is uh, based on my personal experience, my personal thinking, my perspective as a Christian, and yes, Whatever I present here is always coming from a Christian perspective, a biblical perspective, and it's uh, you can challenge me all you want, but that is my belief and I hold to it until somebody can prove otherwise to me. And I think yeah, you can try, but that is going to be very hard. However, I have an open mind because I believe that there are atheists um, who um, are genuine people, other Christians of other religion um, um, belief um, that's not not necessarily like mine that that do have genuine questions. Take for instance, I'm gonna um, read one of the questions that this guy asked, and it's um, what is it? Uh, it's it's coming from username. He calls himself username um, in one of my videos, and it says, "Okay." How could an all-knowing and all-powerful being end up creating a system that needed to be changed? Um, that's part of the question. How could an all-knowing being um, come up with a system or end up creating a system that needed to be changed? So, in other words, how I interpret this question, if you're God, how... Can you come up with something that did not work? And that's a reasonable question. And then you had to change it. And I think he's probably referring to um, like the Old Testament system of sacrifices. I don't want to assume. I'm sorry he didn't make it a little more um, clear. But um, I'm assuming he meant um, the Old Testament system. Well, my answer to that is simple. Um, it was to lead up. It was the shadows, the 
Bible call it, of things to come. So God is a God of time based on the Bible. And he, um, he, the ultimate aim was for him to sacrifice himself or his son. Um, but in the meantime, because it has to be done at a particular time, there was something for those persons back then in the form of the sacrificial system. And that sacrificial system was to point. So for instance, when a lamb was slain, that lamb represented the Son of God who would be slain, right? When the blood was shed, without the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So that had to be done for sins to be committed, to, to be uh, forgiven. So that is why that system was just a shadow of things to come. It's a forecast. But the real thing was when Jesus came in his time. So in the fullness of time, um, Galatians 4.4 4 says, God did what he needed to do, which is send his son. And he came here to demonstrate what God is like. And let me ask you, as I, you know, this wasn't part of it. But, but do we have any problem? With the life of Christ? Have you ever really studied the life of Christ and found fault in his life? Be honest with me. His teachings, his love for humanity, his war against the established religions, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and, and, and religious people, right? He was he was someone who came to the defense of the outcasts. Do you guys have a real problem with this Jesus? I, I find it difficult to see how anyone can find fault with Jesus Christ. Honestly, because when I study his life, there's a book that I read. It's called The Desire of Ages, written by a, a lady named Ellen Jean White. And when I read about the life of Christ... You cannot find fault with this man if you're a reasonable person. Nothing that he did says he's anti-human. He was a very humanitarian person, right? He was a champion for the poor, for the outcasts, for the neglected, for the sufferer, for us, right? He was against hypocrisy. It was against religious people who, who close themselves as if they are better than other people. And he hit out hard against that. Can you find fault with this person? Anyway, um, that was just a byproduct. Let, next question. Um, why did he have to follow such an elaborate plan? Become human only to anger certain humans enough to make them kill him. Right? Why did he have to, 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 to come here so that he can be killed? Once again, he said he did. no one took his life. Yes, he came here. He left the glory above that he had. Came here um, to show human beings what God was like in the flesh. Because remember, you know, my friend, God is a spirit. We're not dealing with the physical here. We must remember human beings. And we are spirit too, but we are clothed in flesh. Because when the spirit is moved from us, we are dead. Our bodies are dead, I should say. But we are spirit beings too. We're not just physical. What keeps me talking? What keeps me, my hands moving? Is it, is it the physical alone? No. It's spiritual. Spirit is something that's invisible. Anyway, so he left there to come here so that he can give himself out. And why did he have to follow this plan? Because it was part and parcel of the whole plan of salvation. Right? It was part of giving himself. It was part of the sacrifice that he has to make to, uh, he had to make to save us. Remember I tell you that when he gave Adam and Eve that command, don't touch the evil tree that I make. Right? He made the evil tree too, by the way. I believe that because the Bible says that in Genesis 2.9. So, but when they touched it, as I said before previously, he accepted responsibility to an extent. He blamed them too because he gave them a command and the command was understood. However, they still went beyond it. But even though they went uh, against it, he still did something about it. If he was an arbitrary, wicked God, he could have simply give them what they deserve, which was death. He could have obliterated them right away. 
But because of his love, because he did not want that to be an option, he found a way. That way was to offer a life. A life can own, uh, uh, it, it took um, a, a life to, to, to th 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 that deserve, okay, put it this way. We deserve death. Huh? We deserve death. Because he did say, if you touch it, you will die. So we deserve that death, period. We should, that human race should have died. And, and maybe move on to something else. But out of his love and mercy and grace, etc., he decided that, you know, something I'm going to do something about it. And that is why he had to um, give his life. He could not have used an animal. An animal doesn't have life. An animal life is borrowed. Right? A human life is borrowed. The only one that truly have life is him. So he had to give himself, his life, for us. I know that may be a mouthful and that may be challenging to your thinking. But that is how I understood it. That's how I'm selling it. Moving on. Alright. So, um, Christianity crumbles on this question. No, don't say things like that. I don't know that Christianity crumbles. Because um, as far as I'm concerned... It's just say Christianity crumbles. Where is Christianity crumbling? Sometimes we use word out of context. Christianity hasn't crumbled with a question. Please, 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 please. Don't use question. Like, like, like some of us, somebody asks you, how, how are you doing? Uh, you're saying, go out, boy, I'm a mashup. You're not mashup. You're just going through some problems. Please, you're not mashup. You're in one piece. So, so don't say Christianity crumble. Say it's a challenging question and you don't think you've gotten a reasonable answer. Alright, um, so the question is, Christians need to be constantly limit, or sorry, Christians need to constantly limit their unlimited God for things to make sense. For instance, how did the talking snake get into a garden protected by an all-knowing and all-powerful being? Um, there is even a part in Genesis where God, an all-knowing being, called out to Adam, um, where art thou? Why? Good question. Alright, so let's, let's, let's take it from, from here. Um, Christians need to constantly, uh, no, no. For instance, how did a talk, the talking snake, by the way, when we read the Bible, okay, when we read the Bible, it says, yes, a snake or a serpent. But it was, if you read other texts, and by the way, the Bible must be read line upon line. Isaiah 28, 10 says, how do we understand and interpret the word of God? It's line upon line, precept upon precept. There is here a little and there a little. In other words, in Genesis you can find a line that um, clarifies a subject. In, in Revelation, in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and when you put them, it's like a puzzle. The Bible is written like a crossword puzzle. It's, it's, it's scattered. The answers are scattered. Yeah? The code is scattered, so you have to bring the code together. Well, that is how it, 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 is, it, is, it, is, um, it is to be understood. All right? So... Um, so the talking snake is really, um, um, I think it's Revelation 12, 9. Don't quote me on that. Or Revelation Somewhere, if you read Revelation 12, it talks about that old serpent called the devil and Satan. The old serpent, the old snake is the devil, God's enemy, chief enemy, and Satan. So it really wasn't a snake. Snake can talk. But the snake came in the, f the, 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 the devil came in the form of a snake. Or a serpent. All right. So, uh, so how did the talking snake get into the garden, protected by an all-knowing and all-powerful being? Once again, there was God um, allowed it. Yeah, He allowed him to get there, but He did a preemptive strike. The preemptive strike was He said to to um to 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 to, to the woman and the man. You can eat from all those trees, but this tree of the good and evil, don't eat of it, don't touch it, because the day you do it, you will die. 
So I guess I, I, if somebody says it's a test, yeah, it's a test. It's a test to see their allegiance. Who would they really obey? And they decided to go against the preemptive strike that God has given. God warned, you know. You see, let me tell you something. If God did not warn, if God did not warn them, as far as I'm concerned, God would be at fault. Fully, 100%. But God forewarn them. When you warn somebody, when you warn a child, don't touch. Don't go in my room because there's a gun in my room. And if you touch that gun, it can kill you. And that child decides decide to go against you. You cannot say you did not warn the person. Warning, the, pre the, the preemptive strike against the devil was to warn. However, for some reason... They go against what God had commanded and they listen to the devil, to the voice of the snake or the voice of the dragon or the voice of the serpent, whatever you want to call him. All right. All right. So um, um, there is even a part in Genesis where God and all knowing being called out to Adam, where art thou and why? Where are you, Adam? Where art thou? Um, you know, as I say before, some things are spiritual. We are not to interpret everything as uh, meaning. Uh, we need to look beyond the mean uh, or a deeper meaning. Where are thou doesn't necessarily physically mean where are you. It can be spiritually, right? But let's say it means physical in this sense. He is simply wanting them to come forward because he knew what was happening in other words why are you hiding where are you standing right eh? is that that he didn't know where they are come on he's god he's he, the bible says um that his eyes run to and fro the earth he's omnipotent him he, he's omnipresence the, the bible says the heaven of heaven cannot contain him somewhere in Kings, first Kings, I think it's 827 or something like that, I'm not sure. But it says the heavens of heaven cannot contain God. God is, eyes are everywhere. So he saw, but he's simply asking, what have you done? Where are you standing with me? Uh, did, you, did you go and touch the thing that I commanded you not to touch? Where are you? Where are you? Why are you hiding? Come out of the closet, in other words. Right, so it's not that he he didn't know where they are physically. So so we you know, and that's why understanding and interpreting the scripture is so important. And and as I said before, I don't tell you I have all the answers. I could be wrong in my in understanding, but I'm doing the best I can to 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 say that God knew where they are, but He's simply asking them to give an account of themselves. And that's why when when He said, "Where are you?" Um, he said, did you touch the thing that I told you not to touch? Who knows? Maybe those days God was relating to them in a more, in a less, uh, in a less um, invasive manner. That thought just come to me, by the way. Maybe God had just leave them with their privacy. Suppose they want to have sex. You know, he, he not there watching. No, he give us. A lot of freedom. Eh? He give us a lot of room to navigate. I, I hate to think that when I'm having sex with my wife, God is here watching us. Come on. I don't want God to be watching me when I'm having sex. You know, things like that. But as I said, those are just my thoughts. Those are just my thoughts. But God knows the end from the beginning. And um, he, but, but the, 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 the important thing here, it was choice. Choice. God must be a God who give us freedom. That is what makes the difference between a robot and a human being. It's freedom of choice. Freedom to obey, freedom to disobey. Right? They could, they, and they exercise their freedom by simply making the wrong choice and went against God's command. It was a command. Don't touch it. Touch everything else. Like you tell your child. Don't touch. You can touch those. 
don't touch this one daddy don't want you to touch this one if you touch it you're gonna be in trouble you're gonna get spanking somebody at the neighbor in the neighborhood come and say or his friend say don't listen to what daddy say touch the thing man you touch it trouble with daddy now same thing today we also um, have the same problem God commands a lot of things don't do this don't do that we st know the command but we still go against him don't we no hasn't changed you know anyway I'll leave it there for today I don't want my videos to be too long because I want people to um, um, listen and I know uh, with, 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 with how we're being programmed these days the vid um, we're being programmed to be just all over the place on the internet like me sometimes I have five different um, things open up at the same time you know but I, so I want to keep it short um, 20 minutes Wow <laughs> anyway thank you guys for your participation I will be reading the others and I will be responding as I say it will be random selection because there's a lot of questions and answers as uh, and um, I'll be going through them and have selected questions that are pertinent and I will make an attempt to answer but don't tell you I have the a final authority but we are reasoning together and to, I'm here to learn from the atheists and the unbeliever and I hope that you can learn from me thank you very much like subscribe and keep in touch with and turn on your notification um, you notice my channel don't have any um, advertisement and all of that I am not here to make money I'm here just to share the word okay my motive is not money to hell with money well, yeah, well, we need money, but I, I don't reach to that point where I have to be asking for money or so on. I just want to indulge. And someone asked me um, the other, yesterday, a friend of mine called me and said, what's my objective? I don't have none. My objective is none. I'm just here to share. I want to hear why a person is an unbeliever in God. Because I have my doubts too with some things. And I want to share you why I believe in God. We don't have to have any motive. I don't have no def definition of what's my objective. I am not trying to convert the world. I am here to share and I'm here to... Because I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much. My mind is expanding right now. I'm learning a lot, a lot about evolution. We didn't do that in school, right? So I'm learning. I'm here for us to interact, all right? Thank you. Have a good and blessed day. Thanks. Bye.